Hotels are full of people. It can sometimes seem like you can't escape them, and there's no chance of having a peaceful swim in the hotel pool on your own. But that's not the case for every hotel, as you're about to learn. Visit some of these, and you'll be all on your lonesome. From a decaying hotel in North Korea to an abandoned beachside hotel in Cyprus, here are 20 Strangest Abandoned Hotels. Number 20. Prora The Prora can accommodate up to 20,000 guests at a time and has a concert hall, cinema, and a dock for ships. But this enormous hotel has never had a single guest. Construction of the Prora on the German island of Rügen in the Baltic Sea started in 1936 when Adolf Hitler wanted a huge beach resort unlike anything the world had ever seen before. And it definitely was huge. Its 10,000 rooms were divided into eight housing blocks, stretching nearly three miles about 500 feet back from the beach. The hotel's job, first and foremost, would be to provide affordable holidays for workers, but Hitler also wanted it to be able to transition into a military hospital in case war should break out. Nearly 9,000 people worked on the hotel's creation, and construction halted three years later when war broke out. When that happened, the workers employed to build the Prora were moved into war factories, and the hotel lay unfinished, never to see a single guest. However, that's not to say it hasn't proved useful. It was used as a refugee camp for people from Hamburg and East Germany, and the Russian army used it for one year before stripping it of all its usable materials. Later, in 1950, the East German military rebuilt some of the demolished buildings, and it has since been used as a youth hostel, museum, military technical school, asylum seeker camp, and even a disco. These days, Prora is being renovated by private investors, with four housing blocks under development, one still used as a youth hostel, and three still sitting in ruins. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Roy's Motel and Cafe the town of Amboy is 60 miles from 29 Palms in California and was made famous when U.S. Route 66 opened in 1926. Roy Crawl opened a service station called Roy's in 1938 and partnered with Herman Burris to expand his business to include a motel, six cottages, a cafe, and the gas station. Amboy's population grew to 700 during this time, and it even had a post office and a school. However, it was the beginning of the end for Roy's and the town of Amboy when Interstate 40 opened in 1973. This interstate meant that most traffic would bypass the town, and Amboy effectively became a ghost town. But it wasn't the end of Roy's completely. Amboy became quite popular as a film set in the 1980s and 90s, and the ever-famous Roy's sign appeared in many famous movies like California and The Hitcher. You might even recognize it in music videos like Hero by Enrique Iglesias. But it wasn't until 2005 that things for Roy's really looked up. A Route 66 expert suggested to restaurateur and real estate investor Albert Okura that he should purchase the town. Yeah, the town. That has real Shit's Creek vibes, don't you think? Albert agreed and purchased it in 2005 for $425,000. He spent $100,000 renovating the buildings and opened the gas station to the public three years later. Five years after that, he sought donations to restore the Roy's neon sign that used to illuminate the township for miles around. Number 18. Paludovo Palace Hotel The large Croatian island of Kirk in the Adriatic Sea is absolutely stunning, so it was only a matter of time before investors would throw their money into a beachside hotel for locals and tourists alike 
to enjoy. That day came in 1968 when work started on a new luxury hotel. The beautiful Haludovo Palace Hotel was designed by a famous Croatian architect, Boris Magas, to attract wealthy people from the West to spend money in Croatia, which was Yugoslavia at the time. Sicilian-American Bob Guccione thought the hotel was a great idea and invested $45 million to add a casino known as the Penthouse Adriatic Club Casino. Both the hotel and casino opened in 1972. However, just a year later, the casino went bankrupt and closed down. While it was certainly an attractive venue for the wealthy, Yugoslavian laws made it challenging for it to be a success. Yugoslavian nationals weren't allowed to gamble in casinos, and there weren't enough rich non-Yugoslavians to help the casino turn a profit. The Haludovo Palace Hotel remained a luxury hotel for several years until the Balkan Wars began in 1991. It then became a refugee shelter until Croatia gained its independence in 1995. In much worse shape, the hotel continued operating until 2002 and now lies abandoned. It's unlikely it'll ever be transformed back into the beautiful, luxurious beachside hotel it once was. Number 17. Ryugyong Hotel The Ryugyong Hotel is pretty magnificent. It's a 1,000-plus foot skyscraper with at least 3,000 rooms and five revolving restaurants boasting panoramic views. When you see it from above, it stands out like a beautiful big Christmas tree against a skyline of much smaller buildings. Construction of the unique hotel got underway in 1987, and the goal was to have it open to the public just two years later. But decades have passed, and Ryugyang Hotel remains closed. It reached its planned height in 1992, but had no windows and was hollow for another 16 years. Eventually, the hotel was clad in glass and metal, and LED lights were later installed so that it became a beautiful, colored structure at night. But these additions and renovations don't change the fact that Ryugyang Hotel is still not open to the public, and people have been calling it the Hotel of Doom ever since. In 2012, an international hotel operator announced that it would be partially opened very soon, but those plans were later suspended, with them saying that market entry was not currently possible. In 2019, new signage with the hotel name was installed in English and Korean, but there's been no word on whether it'll finally open or not. Number 16. Policia Hotel you can't blame the Policia Hotel owner for why the hotel is abandoned and dilapidated today. When there was an explosion and fire at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in 1986, 350,000 people had to evacuate from their homes and businesses immediately. They had to do so with such haste that many of the building's interiors looked like they did on the day they were abandoned, and no one was able to return for their personal belongings. The same goes for the Policia Hotel. It's one of the tallest buildings in Pripyat and is unlikely to ever be inhabited by guests again. The hotel is located in the middle of the city in Lenin Square, forming part of a complex with a department store, restaurant, and the Palace of Culture Energetic. Unlike other buildings in Pripyat, the hotel wasn't abandoned right away. Liquidators used to sleep there while working their way through the aftermath of the disaster, and it's also where helicopters were coordinated. As the power plant was visible from the hotel roof, spotters would use the roof to guide them to the best places to dump sand, boric acid, and lead into the burning reactors. Once the liquidation process was over, the Policia Hotel was abandoned and remained in a state of disrepair like nearly every other building there. Number 15. Hotel Belvedere Dubrovnik Hotel Belvedere in Dubrovnik, Croatia was once one of the most luxurious hotels along the Adriatic coast when it opened its doors in 1985. It boasted views of Dubrovnik, had its own helidrome, offered five-star service, and even had a glass elevator that would take guests directly to the beach. It also had 18 floors with more than 200 rooms to ensure that as many tourists as possible could enjoy everything it offered. It was a genuine tourist hotspot, 
and it's hard to think that it didn't stay that way forever. In 1991, Croatia entered a war and the hotel was demolished when Serbian forces attacked Dubrovnik. When the town was under siege, locals used it as a shelter, but that was essentially all it was good for at that time. These days, it's nothing more than an abandoned structure with private property, no trespassing signs warning people to stay away. And instead of tourists taking over during the warmer months, it's greenery and graffiti instead. But that's not to say tourists still don't visit. The town was a primary film set for the Game of Thrones series, so people flocked to see it in person. There are also plans to build a new Hotel Belvedere, with Russian billionaire Viktor Vexelberg paying 12.2 million euro for it and a planned 150 million euro investment in the pipelines for a smaller 50-room hotel. Number 14. Lee Plaza Hotel Walk down West Grand Boulevard in Detroit, Michigan, and you can't help but spot the Lee Plaza Hotel. The enormous 16-story building is a registered historic site, but it's a vacant apartment building with a challenging story to tell. Detroit developer Ralph T. Lee organized its construction in 1928, with well-known architect Charles Noble behind its grand design. The goal of the building was for it to be an upscale apartment with hotel services. As soon as it opened in 1929, Ralph Lee sold it to the Detroit Investment Company. But like many companies during the Great Depression, the Detroit Investment Company experienced financial difficulties, and by 1925, both Ralph Lee and the Lee Plaza were bankrupt. By the time a court dispute over ownership ended in 1943, people weren't all that interested in luxury apartment living. Residents started leaving, and the rooms were being rented out to transient guests. In 1960, it became a senior citizens complex and finally closed in 1997. Ever since then, there have been proposals for various projects to give the hotel a new lease on life, but it remains closed to this day. Number 13. Hotels in Varosha not just one, not just two, and not just three hotels sit empty and abandoned in Varosha. Countless hotels are, along with homes, shops, and other buildings. In fact, the entire town of Varosha in Cyprus has been abandoned and not by choice. Varosha used to be a popular tourist destination for its sandy beaches and blue water. Eventually, 39,000 people called Varosha home, and famous celebs like Elizabeth Taylor and Bridget Bardot used to visit. But that all changed in 1974. Turkish troops arrived, conquered the town, fenced it off, and wouldn't let anyone in. Cyprus has long been at the heart of a battle between Turkey and Greece. For a long time, Greek and Turkish people from Cyprus lived relatively harmoniously, but those days were over once the Turkish military arrived. As the tanks approached, residents fled, leaving all their possessions behind. Dozens of hotels sit empty, and one under construction still has a construction crane in place. It has never been finished. Even all these years later, Turkish troops refuse to let anyone into Varosha. This is because the town is protected by the 1984 UN Security Council resolution. This means that the town can only be resettled by its original inhabitant. If they let people in, they'll be returning the town to the Greek, which they don't want to do. Number 12. Grand Hotel Kupari the village of Kupari used to be a desirable tourist destination and was particularly popular with high-ranking military officers from the Yugoslav People's Army. The tourist complex had everything you needed to relax, like luxurious hotels and beautiful beaches. One of the most popular hotels was the Grand Hotel, which was built in 1920. It had 139 beds, rooms with ocean views, an indoor swimming pool, and a stunning location. But look at it today, and it's hard to picture it in better times. By the time the Croatian War of Independence ended, it was a mere shell of its former self and has only become more dilapidated since 1990. All other surrounding hotels have since been demolished, but the Grand Hotel remains and is protected as a historical building. Except it's not being protected at all. 
it has definitely fallen into a state of disrepair, and it's highly unlikely that it will ever be restored to its former glory. Number 11. Baker Hotel Pay a visit to Mineral Wells just 50 miles from Fort Worth, Texas, and you'll immediately spot the Baker Hotel. It towers above all other buildings in the tiny town and used to be a thriving hotel. It opened mere weeks after the stock market crashed in 1929, but came to its own in the 1930s and 40s when a military base was established nearby. Many famous people stayed at the Baker Hotel, like Judy Garland, Helen Keller, and apparently even Bonnie and Clyde. The hotel was as fancy as they get. It had 450 rooms, grand ballrooms, a gym, the very first hotel swimming pool Texas had ever seen, and even a bowling alley. It would seem as though the Baker Hotel would be successful forever, but it wasn't. It started to struggle in the 1960s, closed briefly for about two years, and then closed permanently in 1972. Ever since, people have shown interest in fixing it up and opening it up again, but all these grand ideas rely on people actually having the money to do it. Fortunately, it seems like it's finally gonna happen thanks to a $65 million renovation project. Number 10. Rum Orphanage Most exquisite hotels are made of brick, concrete, and similar materials, but the Rum Orphanage building was different. The large building off the coast of Turkey on Bukata was made mostly of wood. It was designed to be a luxury hotel and casino in the early 20th century, but when there were issues with permits, it was sold and turned into an orphanage called the Rum Orphanage. As it spans an incredible 215,000 square feet, it's believed to be the largest historic timber building in the whole of Europe, which is perhaps all it has going for it right now. Orphanage operations ended in 1964, and it lay abandoned for decades until officials started thinking about what they could do with it. The goal was to turn it into an environmental institute, but a conference was held in 2021 to discuss what would happen with it now that it was in danger of collapse. Restoration Project Coordinator Lockie Vingus said at a meeting that they would be determining the building's functions in the coming months and that it would be restored. The building was known around the world for its architectural features and was a monument for progressive education, compassion, and social solidarity. It was a cultural and architectural asset that, if restored, could be passed on to future generations. Number 9. Hotel Ponce Intercontinental Hotel Ponce Intercontinental, also known as El Ponce, opened in 1960 in Puerto Rico and was the very first modern hotel in the city. American architect William Tabler came up with its contemporary and futuristic design, and the hotel stood out like a shining light on the city. Its position on the top of the El Vigia Hill allowed guests to enjoy amazing views of the Caribbean Sea and Puerto Rico, and they could also enjoy a number of luxury services and amenities during their stay. However, even though it was the place to be if you were a celebrity or diplomat, it wasn't all sunshine and roses for the hotel's owners. A mere 15 years after Hotel Ponce Intercontinental opened its doors, it slammed them shut for good. And the weirdest part is, no one knows why. Some people say that labor conflicts were to blame combined with high operating costs and its location, which made it challenging to access. Now, people might not agree on the cause, but they can agree that the closure seemed sudden, shocking, and unexpected. In 1985, it opened again as a temporary shelter for survivors of the neighboring Mameas community who experienced a landslide, but no long-term efforts have been made to repurpose or reopen the hotel. Number 8. Grossinger's Resort Looking at Grossinger's Resort in Catskills today, it's hard to believe it was once a must-visit destination for the rich and famous. 
flights used to be much more expensive than today, so affluent New Yorkers used to head to the Catskills around Liberty, New York to vacation rather than going to other desirable destinations like Miami. While there were many resort hotels in Catskills, Grossinger's Resort was undoubtedly the creme de la creme and would see more than 150,000 visitors every year. In part, this was because the facilities were state-of-the-art. It was the very first resort in the United States to have artificial snow year-round so people could go skiing whenever they wanted, and everything was just so fancy. And it got even fancier when Jenny Grossinger took over. It was once a small, family-run hotel that Austrian immigrants Asher and Malky Grossinger started in 1917, but their daughter, Jenny, took it over and transformed it. It soon encompassed 35 buildings on 1,200 acres with a private airfield, a large dining room suitable for 1,200 guests, and even a nightclub. However, things changed when Jenny died. Guest numbers started declining from the early 1970s, and it eventually closed in 1986. Number 7. Sheraton Rarotonga there are many beautiful and luxurious hotels in Rarotonga, but Sheraton Rarotonga isn't one of them. Today, you can pay $5 to explore the abandoned hotel and learn why it's in the state it's in, but there'll be no overnight stays, that's for sure. In the 1980s, Italian contractors were hired to build the Sheraton Rarotonga Hotel, which would cost around $80 million. Instead of using local labor, the contractors brought in hundreds of Italian workers. Locals were furious, especially the landkeepers, the Takatumu tribe. Before long, they had constructed a 250-room hotel and were in the early stages of developing the surrounding land. This would involve rerouting the waterfront road around the complex so they could create a man-made lagoon where the original road would have been. But to do this, they had to receive government consent from New Zealand, and Minister of Foreign Affairs Winston Peters declined it. And he didn't just decline it. He threw them out of the country, possibly after learning they were mafia. The hotel became abandoned and was derelict before long. Years later, Hilton tried to finish the hotel, but the land had already been cursed by a Takatumu tribe member. When Hilton attempted to get supplies from Australia, a representative was sent with $7 million to sort it out, but they never returned. Some sources report that it was actually a tribal chief who took the funds, but this can't be verified. Number 6. Hotel Belvedere du Rayon Vert the Hotel Belvedere du Rayon Vert, above the railway tracks in Cerbère, a southern French town near the Spanish border, is probably one of the most unique-looking hotels you'll ever see. It kind of teeters above the railway tracks and looks more like a ship than a hotel. Still, it used to be quite a well-known and busy hotel. It had a tennis court on the roof, a state-of-the-art cinema, and luxurious rooms. Many people used to check into the hotel during their railway journeys from Northern Europe up to Spain. But then, the Spanish Civil War broke out, followed by World War II, and the hotel would be left to fall into ruin. It officially closed its doors in 1983, was registered as a historic monument four years later, and is no longer a hotel. But it's not entirely abandoned, either. Ten of the original suites have been refurbished, so you can rent them out on a weekly basis for €350. Euro. The same family that owned it initially still owns it today, and they've undertaken some modest renovations to retain some of its original charm and elegance. And while the state-of-the-art cinema within the hotel is no longer state-of-the-art, it's still relevant and useful. A local film festival has been using it annually since 2005, and the winner gets to stay at the Belvedere to write or scout for future films. Number 5. Riviera Hotel The Riviera Hotel, which people used to call the Riv, was an impressive 23-story, 110,000-square-foot hotel and casino with more than 2,100 rooms in Winchester, Nevada on the Las Vegas Strip. It ran for 60 years, from 1955 to 2015, and the last owners were the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority, which demolished it to create the Las Vegas Global Business District. To say the Riviera Hotel had an interesting history 
Deep would be an understatement. It went bankrupt within three months of opening, and former Flamingo Hotel managers took over its operations by leasing it from the ownership group. Gus Greenbaum, the leader of those managers, had only recently retired before taking on this big job, and it's believed that Chicago mob boss Tony Accardo forced him out of retirement. Among Gus's staff was the entertainment director, William Nelson. Before long, he was discovered to be a mob informer by the name of Willie Bioff and was in 1955. Gus also had a gambling and drug addiction, leading him to embezzle from the casino. Three years after William Bioff was Gus and his wife were also at their home in Phoenix, Arizona. It's believed that either Tony Accardo or crime figure Meyer Lansky, also known as the mob's accountant, organized it. The Riviera Hotel filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in 1983 and eventually filed for bankruptcy in 2010. The Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority purchased it and the land around it for $182.5 million in 2015. Number 4. Penn Hills Resort Penn Hills Resort in the Poconos used to be a popular getaway destination for individuals, couples, and families alike. It had guest villas with heart-shaped jacuzzis and round beds, not to mention two swimming pools in the shape of wedding bells. It was an absolute delight. But then it was abandoned in 2009 when the co-founder, Francis Poelio, died at the age of 102, and it's become nothing more than an eyesore and hassle for the locals. Residents in the Stroud Township have been complaining for years about the resort along Route 557 as it had been a safety hazard for a long time. Township leaders have asked property owners to clean up the site for years, but they haven't done anything. Firefighters were getting fed up too, since they had to constantly use their time and resources to put out fires on the property. Eventually, the township got court approval to demolish and clean up the property themselves. It's believed that demolishing the Penn Hills Resort would cost upwards of $750,000 and it would be a long-term project rather than just something they could do in a couple of weeks. Number 3. Hotel Del Salto Hotel Del Salto in San Antonio del Tequendama, Colombia, was architect Carlos Arturo Tapias's very own mansion. It was built for him as his own home in 1923, and was everything you could want in a residential mansion and more. It had beautiful French architecture, high windows, and a grand presence overlooking the Tequendama Falls. The mansion was added to over the years, and by 1928, it was operating as a hotel for wealthy tourists wanting to visit the Tequendama Falls. It was so popular that the hotel ran quite successfully for at least 60 more years. In 1950, plans were in the pipeline for the entire building to be developed into an 18-floor hotel, but nothing ever came of those plans. Instead, the hotel kept operating from the original structure until it became too damaged, allegedly by the polluted Bogota River. People started to lose interest in the area, and the hotel closed in the 1990s. It has been abandoned ever since. The story of its abandonment is certainly sad, but there are other sorrows associated with Hotel Del Salto. It's apparently the site of many suicides, and some people think the hotel is now haunted. Number 2. La Gondola Hotel and Restaurant the Venetian La Gondola Hotel and Restaurant, which opened its doors in Derby, UK in 1968, was made particularly famous by its appearance on Ramsey's Kitchen Nightmares in 2006. Gordon visited the establishment in 2005, and it was a 125-seater restaurant with a connected 21-bedroom hotel. It wasn't doing well. Daniela Bayfield purchased the business on a whim after going through a divorce and family grievance, and she had sunk $500,000 pounds into it by the time Gordon visited. Gordon helped Daniela make some incredible changes, but it didn't help the already sinking ship. When Gordon later returned, he was happy with the food and learned that sales had quadrupled. However, La Gondola closed in 2007 and went into liquidation. The hotel stayed open for wedding receptions, but later closed and was abandoned. 
Planning permissions were submitted in 2012 to demolish part of it and build apartments, but the local council denied the request. Sadly, Daniela died in her sleep in 2019, and the hotel went up for auction in 2020 but failed to sell. Number 1. Eden Hotel you can definitely tell that the Eden Hotel in La Falda, Argentina was once a beautiful building. The former hotel and historic site is one of the oldest colonial buildings in South America, but it's no longer an operational hotel. German Army officer Roberto Bajical built it in 1897 with assistance from shareholders. However, it wasn't as profitable as they had hoped, and the shareholders decided to dissolve and liquidate the company. Eden Hotel ended up in the hands of Walter and Ida Icorn, Germans belonging to a German expatriate community in Argentina. They were also supporters of the Nazi Party and Adolf Hitler. When the nation made its March 1945 declaration of war, the Argentine government seized the hotel, citing it as representing enemy property. Efforts were made to revitalize the hotel throughout the 1960s, but it no longer housed guests. In the years after, it was vandalized and closed permanently in 1965. The building was declared a historical monument in 1988 and has been partially restored and reopened as a tourist destination. It's quite sad seeing how some of these hotels started and where they ended up. If money wasn't a factor and you could fix any of these hotels, which one would you pick? It'd be nice to see some of them filled with people once more. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!